If you like going fast, then you also have to like slowing down, and brake pads are your best friend for that. These little guys get pushed together by your brake caliper pistons and squeezed together on your brake rotor, causing your tire to dig into the dirt and slow you right down. If you're looking for more braking performance out of your current setup, or if it's time to replace some worn out brake pads, then you want to make sure you're putting in the perfect brake pad for your riding style and the conditions you ride in. You need to know the differences between the different types of brake pads and which situations each of them excels in. My name's Tor, and today we're going to break it down. The biggest difference between types of brake pads is the braking compound on the pads. The two most common options are organic, also known as resin, and metallic, also known as sintered. They all look pretty similar to the naked eye, and you have to really dive into their composition to understand what really sets them apart from each other. The organic pads are made of tiny little fibers and other organic materials like rubber and graphite that are bonded together with resin. That's why they're called resin pads. The metallic pads are made of a mixture of metallic compounds like copper, nickel, and iron, which are bonded together through sintering. Sintering is the process of turning a liquid compound into a hard solid compound through high amounts of pressure and heat, which is how metallic pads have gotten their nickname of sinter pads. Semi-metallic pads are a combination of the organic and metallic pad material bonded together with resin to try and combine both of their best qualities into one super pad. Each brand of semi-metallic pads is a bit different from each other because they have different ratios of organic fibers and metallic bits, so they'll all feel a little bit different on the trail. Ceramic pads are a more niche type of brake pad and are made of a really similar material to ceramic pots, but they're quite a bit more dense and durable. They've also got super fine copper fibers embedded in them to help increase friction and heat dissipation. Because of the difference in how these pads are made and what's actually inside of them, they perform super differently out on the trail. Let's check out what you can expect from each of these pads. Out on the trail, Organic pads have a very smooth feel at the lever with minimal vibration and feedback coming back to your hands. And they're also one of the quietest compounds. Because they're made of a bit of a softer material than other compounds, they'll take the shortest time to bed in, but that also means that they won't last as long as other options. And that's especially true in wet conditions. During those wet winter months, with all that water and grit finding its way onto your rotor and pads, you'll go through these organic pads quicker than a block of Parmesan in Olive Garden. <laughs> the organic compounds also have the lowest maximum operating temperature of any compound, so they'll start glazing a little bit before any of the other types of pads. Once a pad has gone over that max temp, all of the fibers and organic bits in there get melted together and they won't offer that same performance ever again. Most bikes come specced with organic pads, so if you're not sure which pads you're rocking right now, chances are they're organic. Metallic pads are made of a very hard metal composition and have very different properties to organic pads. That more resilient compound will last longer and they offer lots of power in all conditions. Metallic pads have a very strong bite when you pull the levers, giving all of their power right when you grab the lever. One of their strongest points is their wet weather performance. Even on the muddiest days, they'll still grab with the same power as if they were dry. And that's why these are a super popular option during the rainy season, when we can expect a bit of rain on pretty much every ride. Their metallic construction will transfer a little more heat to the calipers and also the fluid, but the pads themselves are super resistant to heat, and this will keep them from glazing for a bit longer on those big descents. These are the loudest brake pads, which doesn't bother everyone, but if you're especially sensitive to how loud your bike is, then this could be something to consider. Also, with that added friction, they'll also wear down your rotors just a bit quicker than organic pads. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, just super quick, I wanna let you know, here at thelostco.com, we sell all these bike parts that you're seeing in these videos, so if you live in the United States and you place an order over $49, guess what, it's coming to you for free. Also, if you wanna look awesome and wear one of these Lostco t-shirts, we have those too. You can look fresh out on the trail and rocking fresh bike parts. Go check it out. Thanks guys, back to the video. Semi-metallic pads are another super common option and are a bit of a middle ground between organic and metallic pads. By combining the material used for both of these pad types, they're supposed to be the super pad that offers the best of both worlds. These are made in the same way as organic pads, being bonded together with resin rather than being sintered like a metallic pad. Because of their resin construction, these are more prone to glazing than metallic pad and can be thought of as a more powerful organic pad. Something to be aware of is that each company's version of a semi-metallic pad is slightly different because they all use different ratios of metallic and organic compounds. So each one will be a little bit different out on the trail. In general, they aim to provide better performance in the wet than organic pads, less noise and rotor wear than the metallic pads, and better heat resistance than the organic pads. But they don't have quite the power or wear life of the metallics. Ceramic pads are another option when it comes to brake pads, but they haven't gotten quite the recognition of organic or metallic pads. 
Ceramic compounds are super popular in motorcycles and cars, but really haven't made the transition over to mountain bikes until pretty recently. They're constructed in a similar way to resin pads in that the ingredients are bonded together with an adhesive compound, and ceramic pads can last even longer than metallic pads. They also have a similar amount of power, but they don't have that same initial bite. They'll come on a bit more smoothly and can give you some more modulation if you feel like your brakes are a little too touchy. They've also got some of the smoothest feeling of the lever and are super quiet, just like resin pads. Ceramic pads are highly resistant to heat, so if you're having trouble with your brakes fading on long descents, then these could absolutely be worth trying out. So now let's figure out which ones will be best for you. If you're more of a casual rider who isn't trying to break super lay for corners or rip the longest descents around, then organic pads are gonna be a great option. You can enjoy their quiet performance and low impact on your brake rotors, and sometimes they're also a little bit cheaper than other options. If you're a fan of how those organic pads feel, but you're just looking to bump up the power just a little bit, or if you find yourself on the occasional rainy ride, then semi-metallic pads are gonna be perfect for you. Because they've got some metal sprinkled in there with the rest of that organic material, they're gonna give you a bit more friction against the rotor and perform better in both the wet and the dry conditions. But because they're both constructed in the same way with resin holding everything together, they're both more prone to glazing than other options. So if you're pulling over to let your brakes cool down halfway down a trail, or if you find yourself getting caught in the rain more than you'd like, then you may wanna step up to either the ceramic or the full metallic options. Both of these compounds perform great in both wet and dry conditions, but they feel pretty different to each other. The metallic pads have the most bite of any option, and if that's what you're looking for, then look no further. These have been the gold standard for brake pads for years, but ceramic pads have been getting a bit more popular recently and are trying to shake things up a little bit. The ceramics offer more modulation because they don't come on quite as strong as the metallics, but they still have lots of power when you really get on the brake levers. The ceramic pads also have this completely different feel at the lever that's just a bit smoother than metallic pads and almost feels like there's less friction getting transmitted back to you in your hands. Combined with how quiet they are, these are like the Bentleys of brake pads, while the metallics are more like a Ferrari. So what do you think is right for you? Do you want to hear the roar of the Ferrari V12 with those metallic brakes? Or maybe the super comfortable Bentley that can still get up and go is more your speed? Or do you want to go to the grocery store and pick up your kids from soccer practice in your Prius with those organic brake pads? Personally, I'll run the metallic pads year round because of how long they last and their resistance to glazing. We've got some fairly steep trails here, and when you're hard on the brakes the whole way down, I really appreciate the resistance to glazing and their super consistent performance all year. Just a quick note, before you install your new brake pads, if you've used these rotors before, go ahead and just give them a thorough cleanup. That includes sanding off all the residual brake pad material and giving it a rub down with some isopropyl alcohol just to make sure it's a perfect surface to bed your brake pads into. Even if you're replacing your brake pads with the same model, you still wanna start with a fresh rotor surface for the fresh pads. Well, that's all from us today here at the Losco. My name's Tor, and if you watch this whole video, then you should probably give it a like and maybe even hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.